Hey, this is Matt once again. Let me make sure I get this situated. Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request, this time from Johnny, who wanted me to do a fan commentary on The Terminator from 1984, which is my favorite Terminator film. Mostly T2, but the first term... Well, I should put it over here. What I enjoy about this the most, I enjoy the horror slasher darker vibe to this. To me, this is the Terminator. And I always thought this was the best one. I still like T2, but I still I think the first is the best. It's funny because I think I love Alien, but I think the sequel Aliens is the best. And but here's the reverse. I know. Strange. But let's get into it. Three, two, one, pressing play. So we're at the MGM Lion, who I don't even know who owns it anymore. If anyone owns MGM, there's been talks of Amazon buying MGM. Probably so that you get the library of films like James Bond. I don't know if that's true, if that will happen. Orion. They had a couple other hit films, Bill and Ted's, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, among others. But then they kind of went belly up. They had some high profile flops like Remo Williams. And by the time we got into the 90s, with RoboCop 3, that was like one of the last releases. Do you think RoboCop was released by Orion? Do you Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? But they had a lot of uh, flops. I think by the time you get to RoboCop 3, they're pretty much on death's de death door. On the door of death. And then they came back for a little bit. Like they released the Belko Experiment. And uh, I guess they release a film every once in a while. Now we have the future war and what they were able to do on a low budget in 1984 doesn't look too bad. It's model work. Again, for a low budget film in 1984, it's fairly ambitious. And of course, this is James Cameron. Apparently, he was doing a film called Piranha 2 The Spawning. He had worked at effects. He worked on the effects for films like... Oh, what was that movie called? I had it in my head. Sid Hayden was in Galaxy of Terror. Galaxy of Terror, other films he worked behind the scenes. He actually worked on some of the little effects of Estate from New York. And then he directed Piranha 2. He got fired during it. And uh, went to do this. And from the opening here onward, the feel, the score that Brad Fidel showcases the look of the film, the tone of the film, the feel of the film. It's, again, it's, it's dark. It's a horror feel to it. And I miss that. And to me, that's the Terminator. And I like Terminator 2. I didn't. People have this misconception that I dislike it. I like Terminator 2. But there's just many other films I like more. I like Aliens more. You know, Mark Goldplatt, the editor, he would go on to direct The Punisher with Dolph Lundgren. And he edited a bunch of other films. Brad Fidel, who worked on the score for Fright Night. The original Fright Night. And uh, by this time, he had done a slasher film called... Uh, oh, I forgot. Uh, Just Before Dawn, I believe it's called. But it's like, I... I like Terminator 2, but again, there's other Arnold films I like more. I Predator, The Running Man, Commando. T2 is a good movie, but it, it got everywhere. And again, it's like, well, I like the film, but it's not even my favorite Terminator film because it did it in a, it did it well, but it was the start of making the Terminator a good guy. It was the start of diluting the Terminator. Some feel that way with Aliens. How some people feel with Aliens, I guess I feel a little bit with Terminator 2, but I still enjoy both movies. And again, Aliens, I think, is James Cameron's best movie, in my opinion. But, I said, yeah, I like T2, but the Terminator idea, I just love the horror feel to it. Which they went away from. And also, it was unique with Arnold, because he rarely, to this day, ever played a villain. Even as a Terminator, he never played the, the villainous 
They tried to do a little bit of that in Terminator 3, and then they had the fake Arnold and Terminator Salvation, but Arnold himself, and then it just got more jokey and jokier and jokiest. Arnold smiling in a police station in Terminator Genesis. Him being a fucking window dresser, whatever the fuck his job title was in Dark Fate. It's like, it, it gone so far away from what the Terminator is, and then you look at this shot here. The score. The score is a horror feel score. And you look at this, this is a scary motherfucker. And what T2 started to do, again, it did it well, but what it started to do was make the Terminator less scary. Less... And it, it works as a one-off. To be different and not the exact same as the first film. But then 3 and then 5 and 6. Blah, blah, blah. Now it's just diluted. And you like when you get to 3 when he's taught to the hand. Taught to the hand. And then it just. The Terminator becomes less scary. That's how some people feel with Freddy Krueger. With the Elm Street sequels. But I, I like those. I did. I like T2 as well. <laughs> but you have these three punkers. Uh, yeah, Bill Paxton may rest in peace. And he's the guy in the middle with the blue hair. Bill Paxton, who has been in Aliens, is Hudson. Hudson, sir. He's Hicks. But yeah, the guy in blue is Bill Paxton. He was in Twister, Frailty, Titanic. And sad that we lost him. And then the guy on the right... He is Brian Thompson, who would be the villain in Sylvester Stallone's Cobra. And he would do a bunch of other stuff, too. He was in Lionheart and The Order with John Van Damme. That he just killed there. But see, that's the thing. This was a guy who was ready to punch a hole through your fucking chest. I don't think Bill Patch's character got killed. He got pushed back, but I don't know if that killed him. But that's who the Terminator, that's what the Terminator was. He was a killing machine that could punch a hole through your fucking chest. And then now we've, because again, this franchises that don't need to be franchises. Terminator could stop at two. Uh, Predator stop at two, which is a great movie. S Alien stop at two, which is a great movie. You only need two Alien films, two Predator films, two Terminator films, although Salvation... I don't mind for what it is. I don't mind it. I don't hate Terminator Salvation. I'm sorry. But the, so many times they pull these franchises so much that you like it's past this expiration date. But yet there are people who just think they're just praying they'll get good again. And then there's people that love no matter what because Arnold's in it. I'm like, I like Arnold, but just because he's in it doesn't automatically make it good. At least not to me. I mean, that's the case, what, is Killing Gunther a good movie? In my opinion, it's not. If it is to you, teach their own. But here we have Michael Bean. Very early role. Now his first role. Before this, he was in The Fan, which was a film. Nothing to do with the Tony Scott film with Wesley Snipes later on. But another one, The Fan, where I forget the actress's name. But he, the Michael Bean plays the villain, who's an obsessed fan, stalks him, and stalks her, I should say. <clears throat> and I wasn't really, a, no pun intended, wasn't really a big fan of that film, but not because of Michael Bean. And then after this, he never really became a big star. I mean, the big roles he got was mainly from James Cameron. Because he was in Aliens, and he wasn't supposed to be in Aliens at first. Because Hitch was supposed to be played by James Remar, an actor who was the bad guy in the first 48 Hours movie. He was the main bad guy. He, uh, James Remar was in The Warriors, he was in a lot of other stuff. He was cast as Hitch because he was a friend with Walter Hill, Walt worked with Walter Hill a lot. But James Remar was under certain substances drugs and so James Cameron's like I can't use this guy 
And that's why Walter Hill never worked with James... Because Walter Hill produced Aliens. And he's like, you embarrassed me. I stuck up for you. You were under the influence. We're not working together again. Whether I'm a producer, director. That's why Walter Hill and James Remore never worked together ever again. And so James Cameron's like, well, I know this guy I worked with before. Michael Bean. And he got to be Hicks. They got to be the villain. The human villain in The Abyss. He was in Tombstone, which is a good movie. And he's done a couple other films as well. The Rock, among others. But yeah, you even listen to Brad Fidel's score, it sounds much more of a horror film score. That's why this is kind of a slasher movie. And, and why I say that, because The Terminator, he's called The Terminator. He should terminate motherfuckers with extreme prejudice. Not shoot people in fucking kneecaps, which again, I keep saying, it works in Terminator 2 for what story was telling and the kind of father-son but not really relationship between him and Edward Furlong's character, John Connor. I get what they were doing. I'm just saying, people are, well, why do you prefer the first film? I've given you reasons. Because I really like Michael Bean. I'm a big fan of him. I think he's underrated. It's sad. Maybe because of his career choices, maybe because of his drinking, it seemed like he was a bit of an alcoholic. Sometimes you could tell that he seems like a more of a surly type of guy in real life. But it is a shame. You know, it's wasted potential. I mean, he was in uh, William, what was the name? Rampage, William Freakin film. Was I wasn't really big on. It's not my favorite William Freakin film. But Michael Bean did a good job acting wise. Just wasn't my favorite. Storyline wise. I, I just thought it. Kind of. Missed potential. But I don't hate the film. But yeah I mean. It's weird that you know. The Terminator and Aliens. You would think he would got a lot more bigger roles. I mean I guess other than Navy Seals. <laughs> And, you know, some directed video films he was in. I forget what it was called now. I think he was in another film called, was it Deep Red or? I can't remember the name of it. <clears throat> but Michael Bean I do enjoy. He does a great job here as Kyle Reese. And we have Linda, uh, Linda Hamilton. Which we later find success. Well, did with this. But then you had the Beauty and the Beast TV show. Live action show where Ron Perlman, Hellboy himself, played the Beast. <clears throat> Which is a TV show I vaguely remember. I remember it existing. I could picture it in my head, but I forget if the Beast like, solved crimes or I, I forget what the storylines were with that. I don't remember how long it lasted, but uh, she was also in Children of the Corn. She was in, later on, Dante's Peak with Pierce Brosnan. She was in Shadow Conspiracy with Charlie Sheen, which is a terrible movie. I, I think I mentioned that before. Someone's like, what's so terrible about that movie? I'm curious. Well, the script. <laughs> it ends with an assassination attempt using a toy helicopter that has real machine guns on it. But it's meant to be taken seriously, not comedy. How do I assassinate the president? And how am I incognito? I'm going to have a toy helicopter I'm controlling and go. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> That's a, supposed to be a serious political thriller. <laughs> That's shower conspiracy. Sadly, George P. Tesmato's director of Ramble 2 Tombstone, this film, his last movie. But yeah, here we have Sarah Connor, you know, just a regular waitress, but she's got. She's, Gives a good performance. She's easy to relate to. Feel bad for her. Fuck this kid. He should be dumped in the fucking toilet. <laughs> you should body slam that fucking kid. Body slam him to the earth. Fuck that kid. And fuck that parent too. Uh, we have Dick Miller. Rest in peace. Good character actor. Worked with Joe Dante quite a bit. The 45 Lunch Lab, laser sighting. 
Uh, there's the gun. Where the red dot goes, you bang. <laughs> a phase plasma, plasma rifle with a 40 watt range. Sorry. I mean, the thing with the Terminator, there were other people up for this. Uh, I think James Cameron first thought of Lance Henriksen, which would make sense in the fact that this is supposed to be incognito. You're not supposed to know he's the Terminator, but Arnold. He does stick out in a crowd. You fucked up, Dip Miller. You fucked up. You don't give someone like Arnold a fucking... Uh, you don't give him ammo or your ass is grass. But... Uh, again, the Lance Emerson, again, it was... The Terminator was supposed to be incognito blend in with a crowd so you're not supposed to know who's a terminator and who's not but in arnold <laughs> you just look at him you could tell what the fuck's going on there's hillbilly jim <laughs> go back to wwf man he'll rip your head off sarcana leo sarcana but yeah, they want to also O.J. Simpson. We can't hire O.J. Simpson. No one would believe him as a killer. You make your own joke about that. <laughs> but see, this is, what I'm, this is the Terminator. The, this intense bit where he walks up and he just, at this point, doesn't know which Sarah Connor is because there's not extreme information. There's only little bits and pieces so he goes to each one kills him just in case all you say and this is the terminator no pity no remorse no fear and then becomes a fucking window dresser what i don't know what the fuck his job whatever he was in dark fate see this is the thing that arnold has that expression the the body language It, it, if there was a way that he could do that without blinking, but that's very hard to do. Because back in the day, the noise, all that, you don't blink no matter what. But, I mean, if there's a way to do that where, I mean, without blinking, but yeah, I don't know if there's a way you could do that back then. I don't think I'd be able to do it. You did, honey. The death of a Sarah Connor on TV. <laughs> you better not come on, better not be sleeping. You're taking sweet ass time. <laughs> I think it was where he has a sort of a nightmare PTSD scene. We get to know a little bit of the future war. But yeah, James Cameron, after this, he was writing... Because, okay, for what I understand, he cast Arnold for this. He's like, hey, Arnold, he did Conan the Barbarian. Why don't we get this guy? He's an up-and-coming action star. And James Cameron's like, I'm not casting this fucking guy. Fine, I'll do the meeting. And then during the meeting, he's like, well... Maybe, you know, as a robot, I could probably see him as a robot. And Arnold wanted to play the villain. And then history was made. Because Conan the Barbarian was a success, but this is what put Arnold on the map. It is. Like Stallone, it was Rocky, and then Rambo. The, it, here it was, you know, the Terminator for Arnold. Because in this time, you know, Commando, run, you know, Running Man, Predator, you know, then T2, you, know, you got True Lies and all that jazz. And for James Cameron, like I said, the uh, Arnold, and I, I don't mind this future war setting. I mean, for a low budget, what they could do, it's ambitious. It's fairly ambitious. You know, yeah, make these things look gigantic as possible. 
and the dark and grungy stuff kind of makes sense because if you're down and dirty it should not look pretty it shouldn't look spiffy it shouldn't look pretty so pretty and no cgi that just takes you out of the equation you know this is all done in camera real explosions real stuff blowing up real debris debris it just you can't get more real than real but for some reason anything cgi is just automatically the way to go There's no reason you can't do this stuff today. It's just because you have a little bit more extra money, you can finesse some of the movements of this or some of the movements of that. But then they just want the, all the CGI stuff. They just, as if, as if they're, they're too scared to do it or it's like, we need, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, that was more of a believable scene than anything I saw in fucking Terminator Dark Fate. Or Genesis. And they had three times, ten times, probably ten times the budget this film had. Literally. Sometimes, smaller is the way to go as if you have the passion and ambition for it. But I was saying, like, James Cameron... Arnold wanted to do the film, but Dino De Laurentiis said, well, we want you to do this movie, uh, Conan the Destroyer. I don't know why I'm having him sound like that, but we want you to do this movie, Conan the Destroyer. We got your, on paper, you must do this. And Arnold's like, ah, yeah, yeah. This is bullshit to live it. Jimmy Tommy, I got to do this bullshit. Although I like Conan the Destroyer. So he does that film, and then <clears throat> while Arnold's doing that film, James Cameron's like, I need work. So he wrote one script of Rambo First Blood Part 2, and he worked on the script for Aliens. To say, hey, you know, this James Cameron guy, you know, we've we met him. You know, we'll see how his first movie goes. We'll see how that turns out. And this was a surprise hit. No one was expecting The Terminator to be a hit. This came out of nowhere and... <laughs> so I laugh at the, the boyfriend character. And he's uh, Paul Winfield. And his partner, Lance Erickson. Again, the original choice for The Terminator. Which would be an interesting, but definitely a different movie as well. <clears throat> but yeah, Paul Winfield, good character actor. Um, damn, these two work well together. They serve their purpose. And that's the thing, like, you just get some good actors in these parts. But it's like nowadays we can't do this. All it's more about looks than fucking acting, and the younger the better. There you got the eighties hairstyle, big and alive on its own. It is alive. But yeah, in eighty four, no one expected the Terminator to be a hit at all. Not one damn bit. <laughs> See, he's hiding because he knows the Terminator's going to come by. He's got six cents. She's, he's like, you know, leave me the fuck alone. See, his mouth is open. Try and tell him, leave me the fuck alone. I don't see what thing is coming. I need to get the fuck out of here. I need to get the fuck out of here. Our... The potential boyfriend of Sarah Connor stirred her up. And she's like, fuck this shit. Uh, Pugsley is the name. He's like, leave me the fuck alone. Arnold is coming. I need to get the fuck out of Dodge. 
I well, I mean that guy pretty much saved her life. Does always she might have stayed there. I think that's uh, Rick Rossovich, who will later be in Top Gun among other stuff. But yeah, in 1984, like there was another film which I really enjoyed called Runaway, and people thought that was going to be the big hit uh, for sci-fi. Because that was directed by Michael Crichton, the guy who did films like Coma and Westworld. Yeah, Tom Selleck, big star for Men and P.I., among other stuff. Yeah, I, I actually have it here. I don't want to hit the fall. I'll try. Right, don't fall. But uh, this is the film. People thought this film would be the big hit sci-fi film, but it wasn't. It wasn't at all. It was. It didn't do that well. And instead, you had. And excuse the background noise. There's neighbors' chickens. There's construction going on. All sorts of jazz. Just. This, but hey, they want. You know, they're working. They're working. It is what it is. Fucking spitting shit all over. What are you doing, Paul Winfield? Stop spitting everywhere. No. Was that a gum or something? <laughs> See, like, that's a nice fun little detail. It's like, give me a cigarette. And then he just realizes he already has a cigarette. I don't think I noticed that little detail before. That's actually kind of funny. I mean, he was give, give me a cigarette. He did a cigarette. And he knows he already had a cigarette. And yeah, I don't know if I noticed that before. See, it's all in the little details. But yeah, I mean, people thought that this was going to be the hit. It wasn't. It got bad mouth, critically deriled. was a big bomb. Although I do enjoy this film. I think this film is... Pretty underrated, but oh fuck, run away! It's the Terminator, and the Terminator did what the Terminator does, and launched James Cameron's career. To he finally got the go ahead to do Aliens, and that launched his career more. Then he got to do The Abyss, and The Abyss didn't do great. But hey, Arnold is a bigger star now. He just did films like Total Recall, which was a huge hit. Now Terminator Two. Bid movie, and then the success of Terminator 2 got him True Lies, Titanic, and all that jazz. <clears throat> Her realizing that two Sarah Connors were killed now. I don't know, we gotta be more worried about this spectacular fire and. Northeast of Chinatown. Uh, look, there's a piece of paper there. Ah, uh, she's looking up her name, right? Like, I would be next. Pretty smart she was able to figure it out, like the whole phone book thing. And see, this is back in the days of cell phones. And again, I've said this before, not here, but in another video. It's interesting when you look back on films, how many of them would be, at times, extremely changed just with the cell phone. Like, literally, just if you have this. Like, imagine how different it would be if you had this. Now, maybe not that different, you just... Pick up, pick up, she doesn't answer. Just like the cops, it didn't answer for her. But you know how many times it'd be the phone, trying to call a cop, trying to call this. Hey, some guy's following me. I'm Sarah Connor. Like, she would call the cops. Hey, I'm Sarah Connor. Meet me here. Blah, 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 blah. Or you have some bullshit. There's no signal. Well, there's never a signal. Why is there never a signal? Again, all that jazz. You didn't have to think about, or worry about, or deal with. In the back then, because that wasn't a thing. 
Sorry. Sounds stupid. I'm just wiping fingerprints off the phone. Stickler for that. But uh, the Technor Club, where our characters, all three of them, the main ones, are finally going to meet, and then some. Ah, uh, the, there's this thing called pay phones back in the day. You put cores and actually pay. Yeah, they don't really have pay phones nowadays, do they? Maybe at a bus station or an airport? Maybe. Maybe they have them there. I think they do. But not too many others. But yeah, the franchise... I mean, this is where Arnold's going to kill the inhabitants thinking this is Saracana. But yeah, again, this is all like a slasher, you know, horror vibe to it, and I, I remember this one thing a few months ago that like, oh, we're gonna do another Terminator, it's gonna be like a horror movie again. You can't do it, man. Arnold doesn't want to do it. He never wanted to play a villain again. It's just it's too late. And again, you technically never needed a franchise. But T2, you had an ending, you tried to do something different. Wow, the Terminator, now what if he was a good guy and face up with an even crazier Terminator? Okay, interesting idea, well made, well directed, well acted, all that jazz. Three and after, you really didn't need. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen, man. And just fuck this guy shit up. <laughs> Fucking ricochet off the wall, y'all. This would be, be like a weird ad for got milk. What do you need milk? Got milk? Yeah, you ain't going anywhere, baby. Boom. Is that the fact he shoots your wands, but he keeps doing it because he has to make sure confirm kill. And again, when you watch the film again, it's technically not that violent in terms of you don't see a lot of blood. You don't see a lot of gore, per se. That was a bit of luck serendipity. Like, if you wait five more minutes, you wait five more minutes... He would have been none the wiser. He would have thought he killed Sarah Kana, And he said, I'm done. And would have fucked off. Although, it, when he completes his mission, what does he do afterward? Does he just hang around? Does he go back in time? Like, let's say the Terminator completed his goal. Completed his task. What would he do? Just wait around? Would he deprogram? Would he just be in a standstill? Would he have a way to go back in time? I think Michael Bean says there's no way to get back. Yeah, I think Michael Bean says that, so I guess it's just like... I guess he just sits in a corner somewhere and rots. Twits. Rust. I don't know. Technically, he could go have a secondary mission, kill as many people as he fucking want. Just go on a killing spree. You can't, you don't drink, you don't eat. Just keep on killing for, you know, he'd be the ultimate serial killer. There you go, that's a Terminator story. Terminator completed his task, he has nothing better to do. His secondary mission kills as many motherfuckers as you want. 
I mean, technically, what else are you going to do? At least until Judgment Day. But it's interesting when you watch this again. It's not as violent as you think where... Okay, he shot the girl, but you didn't see anything other than a hand rolling. When he killed Dip Miller, you didn't see the gunshot to Dip Miller. You didn't see blood. When he killed the lady, he just you see a gun going... Poof, poof, poof. When you see this, I mean, it's all about the score, the physicality, and the intent. And it sells the illusion of violence a lot more. And you have this interesting thing where she thinks that's the killer while the real killer is going to up. And also about how like Michael Bean and Arnold Schwarzenegger, you think, oh, they're the stars of this film. They're... They could have never met each other because they never share the screen. Like, Michael Bean, like, that's probably, well, that could have been a double. But Michael Bean and Arnold never share the screen together. Because they have Arnold doing this, yeah, Michael Bean doing this. Great build-up, though. Great piece of editing. Editing to each of the, the gunshots. Not confusing. As a terminator is not going to tear getting bystanders. Just one guy there. But think about it, your hero and your villain are never in the same screen together. And the only time they actually do fight is when Arnold is not Arnold anymore, he's just the machine, the special effect. So, I think Michael Peen even tells a story, like, we technically never even met each other. <laughs> Which is strange when you think about that. Very strange. And another great piece of editing to the tone of the, the gunshots. Go with me if you want to live. And then the Terminator sequels were just, can we repeat the stuff that people remember... So repeat, come with me if you want to live, but let's have someone else say it. Let's have the young Sarah Connor say it. Let's have the older Sarah Connor say it. Let's have this person say it. Let's have, you know, we have a good Terminator say it in a different, like, here we have Michael Bean say it. Okay, second one, let's have the Terminator, the good one say it. Okay, now let's have the young Sarah Connor say it. Now let's have the old T Linda Hamilton say it in Dark Fate. It's like, yeah, I remember the movie when it was good. And nice usage of a low budget where... I look at this. Right on the windshield and... Boom! Again, great, nice uses of slow mo, crash right through the windshield. Why well, again? This feels intense. It feels with the score. Mark Goldblatt, great editor. I mean, he edited some of the great action films from Rambo Two and Predator Two. He worked with James Cameron quite a bit. He was a director. He did Dead Heat with Treat Williams. He did The Punisher with Dolph Lundgren. Definitely one of the best editors. And a decent director. He sadly only did two films. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Ciao, police officer. Fuck you, cop. In my car now. And that's the thing with Terminator 2. Like, do you want to see just the exact same thing? Again, T2 works. Again, I'm just saying I prefer the first Terminator. Kind of like how some people prefer Alien more than Aliens, but I don't just... Aliens I like more and Terminator...
I like more, just how it is. And then James Tamron, after this, like I said, he did uh, Aliens, which is one of my favorite films of all time. He did The Abyss, which I do enjoy. Series of 1989 underwater films. You had Deep Star 6, Leviathan, which Leviathan is my personal favorite, this one here. Endless Descent was the next year, 1990, I believe. The Evil Below was 89, I believe. Maybe 90, I can't remember. Tre Creatures from the Abyss or something? I can't remember. Lords of the Deep? I can't remember the fucking name of it. <laughs> Might have been Lords of the Deep. Something like that. It was another like really shitty low budget one. I mean, anyway. I do like the Abyss, but it didn't do that well. Let's see, I'm trying to think. Uh... Oh yeah, he did T2, and then he did True Lies, which is a great one. Strange that still doesn't have a fucking Blu-ray, True Lies. Whether because of the studio or because of Jimmy Tammy. Why would I call him Jimmy Tammy? Because I lost respect for the guy. I think Linda Hamilton took his balls in the divorce. And he did Titanic, which is an overrated fucking film. He did Avatar, which I never liked. I didn't like it back then. I have a review from literally like... 10 years ago, 11 years ago, where I said, this film sucks. I don't know why people love it. You're crazy, man. Nowadays, who gives a shit about Avatar? Exactly. Fuck the Avatar. And that was the last film he directed until he does his 18 Avatar sequels that I'm not going to give a fuck about either. But this was a smart decision by James Cameron. I need to get this exposition out. How do I do this? Well, do it in the middle of a high-speed car chase. So yeah, you're getting this exposition, but you're on the run. There's movement involved. You cut to uh, turns and dealing with cops and then dealing with the Terminator and crash you through this, crash you through that. So we have a little bit of action, then you give a bit of exposition. So... You're not just sitting there bored. Okay, let's wait for this to happen. Oh, we're in the middle of a car chase. Okay, now we're getting some info. And you even have like the movement. So your mind is processing the movements. The little bits of action here and there. So you're not bored, but you're also getting the info that's needed to uh, make the viewer understand what's going on. And then, and then also when, when you watch this movie, it doesn't make it seem as if every fucking Terminator looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. They seem like they could put any skin on a Terminator. It seemed like it was only later that it seemed as if, well, all Terminators look like that. At least the T-800. But I don't see why that's the case like you but i know in t like terminator 2 it actually would have worked better strategically if it did not look like arnold because then they'd get that initial distrust oh yeah the guy that looks like the guy that tried to kill me <laughs> well pity will not stop ever until you are dead marco bean sells it he sells that well but now that I think about in Terminator 2, why is it that the T-800s, they all look like Arnold? I mean, wouldn't you be able to put any type of skin on it? It's like you have the mold of an action figure, but you make every action figure look the same. Now, it look different if you have a different, but I mean... I don't know, man. I would think, okay, T-800, they try to have... If they're infiltration, if T-800 has been around, then you should be able to put different skins on them. Unless there's some kind of lore, I don't know. 
But you should be able to take here's T800, here's another T800. Here you put Arnold's skin. There could be one of Sylvester Stallone's skin and Bruce Willis' skin and Danny Glover's skin and <laughs> all that jazz. I mean, I mean, if they're able to make these fucking robots, you think they'd be able to do that? Maybe not. I don't know. Never met Skynet. Never talked to him. Never chatted to, with him about it. But anyway. But yeah, it's interesting that... Okay, you don't do this exposition. You do it on the run. So then the audience is not bored. You're still in this for, forward momentum. <clears throat> and yes there's always that I forget the word for it paradox of well how is it that John Connor was born in order to become the leader of the resistance when the father wasn't even born yet because of course you find out the father is Kyle Reese which is nice on a plot point but on a I mean it's nice on an emotional point but as a plot point you know well wait a minute he wasn't the very first time this went through how was John Connor born when the father wasn't born yet but then they call us a type of paradox. And I think if you ask James Cameron, it's like, who gives a shit? Don't worry about it. <clears throat> well, I guess that's the thing with a lot of movies. There'll be stuff, you know, well, wait a minute. How does that make sense? And how does that make sense? And how you deal with it or overlook it, overcome it. By how much you enjoy and that's subjective. So, for example, do you enjoy the actors? Do you enjoy the action? Do you enjoy the atmosphere? Do you enjoy the music? Do you enjoy the intensity? Or do you, like, the stuff that different people are into. Like, why one person loves a slasher film, but one other person hates it. One person loves a film like Rambo, John Wick, Die, you know, Die Hard ripoff, and others think it's junk. Someone like DC, and why someone likes Marvel. It's all subjective. Damn it, now I got the hiccups. Because I drank this wrong shit. Greg, that's all I need the hiccups. <laughs> of course, I haven't had hiccups in a long time, and now I get them here. Sorry, I gotta hold my breath for a minute. After the next hiccup. I think that's a nice way of utilizing the build-up, especially with the music. Like Arnold looking, he realizes it. Oh shit! Gotta get the fuck out of Dodge now. I would say this is my favorite score Brad Fidel has done. His score for Terminator 2 is good. His score for Fright Night is good. But I would say this is my favorite. And this is one of my favorite pieces here. I mean, the Terminator theme is great, but I really like this chasing. Love the music. T-800, 
just so it just sounds so unique. It, it, it just sounds dark and <laughs> horror film like. I don't know how else to put it. Hey, again, like this is a pretty decent car chase for what you can do on a low budget. Like James Cameron's a guy that he's committed to getting what he wants, and he doesn't suffer fools, which makes him have to be a dickhead, but. At least back then he was a dickhead that made movies worth a shit. <laughs> there you go, Sarah Connor made a good decision. Finally tops come. Cooler heads prevail. And she's right, they would have shot his ass. Again, you get moments where Linda Hamilton's character is being smart, is being strong, but it's not a fucking Mary Sue. Now you can't do that you can't do that nowadays. <laughs> where did he go, George? Where did he go? Ah, the police station. I think this is also where we're going to get Arnold's uh, surgery with the eyeball. I believe that's it. <clears throat> premature find out that her friends have been killed and we have this psychiatrist who appeared in Terminator 2 and had a cameo I think in Terminator 3 he had a cameo I believe he did um. Sorry, I'm not saying anything. I'm just getting sucked into the film. It's been a while since I've seen this. But I think it's one of those films I watched quite a bit on VHS back in the day. And I don't know. You, you watch a lot of... When you watch a... F yeah, it, yep. His eyes fucked up. Back in the day when you would watch films... like People forget back in the day there were, we didn't have stuff like the internet... So, if you lived on a farm in the middle of nowhere, you had, we had like maybe four channels. ABC, PBS, CBS, and another form of CBS. Four channels. There's really not much else to do other than, you know, read movies and, and watch them. Or you buy a VHS tape and you watch that over and over and over again. To the point, a lot of times these type of films would be committed to memory. Nowadays, when there's such a exponentially vast array of information, with the internet alone, streaming services, films being made on every other kind of platform, multitude more films being made each year, because there's so many platforms, so many, not just theater, not just direct to video, but it's like. Amazon, Disney Plus, Netflix, all that jazz now. YouTube even. Hell, I mean, I think there's more people that watch YouTube than TV. This is all before, you know, when TV channels, there was a shitload of them. So, I'm, my point is, with this vast array of info that you could look into, yeah. You know, there's a part where they goes, wait a minute, you haven't seen this film? How come you haven't seen this film? But then you got to take two steps back and go, well, look where they're being born into. This era where how many other video games, how many all this other stuff?
I think this is an exposition dump, but you have it's doing it an interesting way. Number one, because of Michael Bean's intense performance, and number two, because you have this guy just trying to determine if this guy's crazy or not. It's just him and me. I didn't. Mean, you look at stuff like this, you go, why wasn't this guy a bigger star, Michael Bean? He should have been a bigger star. I mean, this and Aliens, I don't know what he did in between. I don't know if it was his attitude. I don't know if it was his drinking problem. I don't know if it was fate, luck. I don't know. Ew. Stan Winston, early work from him. That's pretty much just, you know, hiding the thing. You just have it to the side. Now pull it out. Kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm pulling it out. Yeah, that type of thing. Now, yes, I will admit this looks stiff. This does not look fluid nowadays. <laughs> you know, like, you know, definitely much more robotic. Well, you tell it's fake. You tell it's a puppet. But I mean, for a low budget film, for the time, they did the best they could. If this film had a, you know, 80 million dollars, you'd be like, what the fuck? And, you know, that's why you have the sunglasses. So you hide that shit. But even for 84, you try to do the best you can. I am with peanuts. And we're going to get to the police station scene. Which. You will never see again in a Terminator movie. Uh, that type of brutality. and When I say brutality I don't mean gore. But I mean. Even this little detail of Lance Hibbert since he's having fun because he doesn't buy into this shit. But Paul Winfield, it's not that he he buys into it, but he's taking it seriously. Like, there's something going on here. Maybe it's not this, but there's like he's taking it seriously. He's much more professional. Sorry, I'm just watching his performance. It reminds me now of Terminator Dark Fate. Because there was a little bit of her on tape in Terminator 2. Because she was in the institution. And then they're showing that footage at the beginning of Dark Fate. Kind of like this footage here. Because that's what, I mean, the footage was from Terminator 2. But the way they're showing it is trying to be reminiscent of this scene. Like how Michael Bean is going crazy and yelling and screaming. Same with, I don't know, fuck Dark Fate, man. Fuck Dark Fate. I, I mean, I haven't even talked about the other films like this after Terminator 2. Because why should I, but... Terminator 3... It's, it's not a film I despise, but it's a film that... Has moments of pretty decent action scenes. But it was a story that didn't need to be told. And the ending of that film. Negated the ending of Terminator 2. There's no fate but what we make. Then the third film's like. Nope that's bullshit. There's fate and that's it. You can't change it. So it went like the complete opposite storyline of Terminator 2. Fate's what we make of it. And Terminator 3 is like, no it isn't. And then Terminator Salvation. I like the film. I don't mind the film. But Meiji was the, the wrong director to choose.
Uh, well, wait a minute. Of course, here you get the famous Albi Buck. Which, for what I understand, Arnold had a hard time saying I'll. So he wanted to say I will. I will be back. And James like, no, say I'll. Fine. I'll be back. Which was fun when he used it a couple more times. Like the running man, he did it. And uh, I think... Did he say in Commando? I'm trying to remember. I know he said in the running man. I'll be back only in a rerun. That was in the running man. Ah, uh, here we go. Again, you'll never see a Terminator do this. It's un PC. Literally just wiping cops left to right and center. Like, this is the Terminator. That's part of his fucking name. Terminate. I know that's technically not his name, but still, I mean, you're calling it the Terminator. He should terminate, motherfuckers. It, it, that's what we've done. The Terminator not terminating people. Now he's always a protector. He's always a good guy. Always a fucking joke. Joke. Smiling. Funny. Joke. We don't take it seriously anymore. He talked too much. Talked to the hand. I'm a w what the fuck was his job in Terminator Darth Vader? I can't remember. House painter, window dresser, what the fuck? There's a couple movies that do a police station massacre fairly well. There's this film, there's Maniac Cop 2. And then the film Malignant that came out uh, this year. You could probably say those are the top three police station massacre scenes. I'm trying to think of others. I mean, there's other massacre scenes, but I'm trying to think of like a police station. Like, this is just... He don't give a fuck. Uh, and why should he? Yeah, Goodbye. Even this bit was like, you know, people screaming in the background, screaming bloody murder. And it just shows how fucking useless all these folks are. Uh, and he used to double whammy. Lance Emerson got the machine gun and shotgun. And like those cops were likable. Plus, you know, I like the actors, and they're dead now. It's ah, oh, I feel bad for that. But I mean, that's the Terminator. You don't give a fuck. <clears throat> this is another good piece of musical score. Yeah, this here. Nice camera work, too. You know, pulling back. And that's in the actors, okay, don't go too fast so you run into the camera, but go fast enough so you keep up. And let's see with Arnold, you know, investigating, looking. You motherfuckers. But yeah, Terminator 3 just felt like what was the point of Terminator 2 then? <laughs> Why well, you kind of just said Terminator 2 didn't matter. I mean, other I guess protected Sarah Connor. I mean, uh, John Connor. I mean, that's what mattered. But the whole, all this stuff with Cyberdyne and Joe Morton's character didn't matter. You just made that point. Like, see, that's the thing. I'm, I can understand I've enjoyed films that have done that and I've let it go. Elm Street films have done that. I mean, 
Elm Street 3 The Dream Warriors kind of made the first movie pointless. Just Nancy and all this stuff to do for Freddy that didn't matter because more people died and more kids died and then she died. And then at the end of the film, you have a light come on, the little model, so you know Freddy's still around. And Elm Street 4 kind of did the same thing with Elm Street 3, which doesn't make me as mad. Because then Elm Street 3 did it to the first. I just, there are exceptions to the rule on everything. I just because on those films, I still enjoy those films overall as a whole. But so many times they'll do a sequel that just makes a previous thing fucking pointless. And the majority of the time when that happens, I'm just annoying. It's fucking irritating. Like Alien 3. Hey, it's new. They just died five minutes because they didn't matter. Fuck Alien 3. Hashtag fuck Alien 3. What else is there? There's a <laughs> new Star Wars films. If I go down that rabbit hole, I'll go for a fucking hour. <clears throat> a fucking. <sighs> this is why I don't look forward to sequels. It's like when they did the X Files reboot, and said, "Oh yeah, the first, the last five seasons of the show." That you watched. And you tried to pay attention to the story. That didn't matter. Aliens. Pfft. It wasn't this whole thing with the bounty hunters. Nah. Whole retcon shit. When they did the X-Files. Season 10 and 11. Oh that was Dennis Stoli. The, no that was actually. Sidra Smoky Man's kid. He impregnated Dennis Stoli. I'm like what? Get the fuck out. It just they, so many times they do that shit, man. Like the new Star Wars making the original films pointless. Even killing the Emperor because they didn't really kill the Emperor. Terminator Dark Fate. Oh, protecting John Connor. That didn't fucking matter because you just killed John Connor and fucked the Savior. Is easy. Because there's just another savior. There's just another fucking person that'll be the resistance leader. You get them in the, They're in every fucking cracker jab fucking box. At the bottom of the cereal box. You pick the cereal, you get another savior. That, that's what the, these writers don't understand because they think, oh, who gives a shit about the story, the mythology? You're supposed to. <laughs> and you don't. Which is fucking hilarious to me. Again, think about it. Like the people who write Terminator Dark Fate. James Cameron, you saying yes, green lighting it. So it's your fault too. Which is ironic because you said Alien 3, which I agree, fucked it up. But then you do the same with Terminator Dark Fate and you don't think that was bad. Yeah, kill John Connor, so it makes Terminator 2 your movie pointless. Pointless. Then what was the point of protecting John Connor if it didn't fucking matter if he died or not? Does there be another savior? You get another cereal box, and at the bottom is another toy. Says savior, only she has no dick. At least that I know of. And then get the Mexican Terminator. The dude, you know... Instead of Skynet, it's another fucking name. Whatever the fuck the name was. I don't even remember the name. And it just, but it's the same shit. <laughs> different day. <sighs> same shit, different day. But for fuck's sake, man. For fuck's sake. Some Tama, you don't... <laughs> That's why... I don't look forward to sequels. I don't look forward to them anymore. Because so many times they just, when they keep going, they ruin the story or they ruin something. Or they, hey, just kill them off. Does that, they have no other better ideas. Kill off Captain Kirk and start your generations. Kill off this person. Kill off that person. 
So I didn't either. They kill him off, or they made the previous movie pointless. But again, there are exceptions. But everything has exceptions. I like some of the Elm Street films. Sequels, that, you know, they did it. It just doesn't mean I like seeing it every fucking time for every fucking franchise. <sighs> yeah, you can see that when that guy had the gun point out, the, the background was kind of like a projector. Do you see it kind of flicker a little bit? Uh, I forget what you what you call that. Screen projection. Kind of like back in the day when people are driving cars and behind them is not an outro road, it's just a screen. To make it seem like they're going somewhere. But yeah, Terminator Genesis and Terminator Darth Fate were just god awful. And they just keep making these films and they keep getting worse. Like Darth Fate, I think, is worse than Genesis. Predators, I did not like. But then they did The Predator and I thought it was worse. And they do another one and I think that would be even worse. Some 80 pound girl is going to fight the Predator. You know the Predator that Arnold Schwarzenegger barely beat. And people like Danny Glover barely beat. Who had all these guns and shotguns. But this girl. She weighs 70 pounds. She beat it with her fucking feet. And her fucking pinky and her fucking clit. She's the clit commander. Of the Native American tribe. The Cleveland Indians. I just... She's a clit commander. She will kill the predator with her clit. Hey there's nothing on that TV lady. You need to change the channel. Just the fucking. The fire station channel. The fireplace. The fire station. It's the fireplace channel. The fire station. Yes, a fire station after it's been burned down, backdraft style. Is that guy looking for rats? Well, I guess for food. Yeah. We got dinner. Well, you know, what else they don't eat? Because that picture will come into play. Which is confusing because what was the movie that that picture came to play? Was it Terminator Dark Fate? That picture came into play somewhere. I think it was Dark Fate. I'm like, wait a minute. That picture will be gone. Because we see that. The picture burns. I think in this scene here. Th I forget which one it was. I think it was Dark Fate. Don't... Unless they're just trying to tell us. This is just a nightmare he's having. And this stuff didn't happen. But it seems like he's having a nightmare. Or something that did happen. But maybe not. But I guess that's the point. Yeah, that picture definitely burns. But I swear there's a... Either the... I forget what... It must have been Dark Fate. I don't... Because like, what the fuck? Like... I wonder where this location is at. Man, they found somewhere in the middle of nowhere and there's a fucking fire, I guess. A lot of smoke. I think this is where you get my favorite line in the movie. Yeah, I still get that puppet. It still doesn't look real. 
Shave your fucking shoulders. This is my favorite line. A favorite line reading in the movie. Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that one guy in the football outfit. God damn you. I had the hidden up my ass. Nah, I don't have the money hit up your ass. We need a room so we can fuck. We need to create the savior of the universe. Yeah, because you get the love scene, and then you get going to the finale, actually. Because we're, yeah, at hour and 15 and hour and 47. So. Without the end credits, about less than 30 minutes. Well, what the fuck's that gonna do? That's gonna be like a fucking spit gun to a Terminator. Fucking machine guns don't do anything to Terminator, but you give her a sit shooter. Maybe it'll annoy him to death. I'm trying to think, like, where's he going? Is he trying to find, like, a car or something? So I guess, are we led to believe that he killed them? Yeah. There's the door. Completely wrecked. So we're led to believe he definitely killed the mother. Because he met her, that's how he has her voice. So yeah, he did kill her. Because how else would he have the her voice? Hmm. Oh, supplies to make the bombs. That's right. Mothballs, corn syrup, ammonia. Make plastique. That's like flares. Must be pretty far away because it's enough for him to make these bombs, have sex, have a little nap, and then wake up. It always sucks that Kyle Reese dies in the film. I mean, you know, it's at least he did it doing what he needed to do, but I think it's even sadder because you look at aliens and they kill him off at Alien 3. It's like his best roles he get killed off. <laughs> and this he gets killed off. And aliens he got killed off in the next one. Alien 3. And then you know the Abyss he's a villain so he gets killed there. The Rock he gets killed. I mean Teddy doesn't die at the end of Aliens so there's that but. He does die a lot in movies now that I think about it. His characters do. Like the fan, he's a villain. In this film, he dies. Aliens, like I said, it's Terror Killer, Alien 3. I don't think he dies in Navy Seals. He's a villain in Tombstone, he dies. In The Rot, he's a good guy, but he dies. Like I said, he just killed a lot of these fucking movies.
But I mean, it's it's not just a a good atmospheric horror film, an action film, but it's a nice love story too. The actors do their jobs well. Linda Hamilton's character, even in this one, I mean, definitely in the second one, but even this one, she's a strong character. You know, waitress just trying to live her life, and by the end, you know, on your feet, soldier, on your feet. And then having to deal with the Terminator, you're a Terminator fucker. But yeah, it's weird. Like, even Linda Hamilton, I mean, I'm trying to remember what she did. I mean, Children of the Corn was around this time, but I'm trying to remember what she did between this and Terminator 2. And yeah, I know there was the Beauty and the Beast TV show, but I don't remember. Actually, I'll, maybe I can look that up. Uh, what these actors did in between. But yeah, I mean, the, the film, good score, nice usage of budget. And James Cameron learned that, I didn't doing films behind the scenes, films like Galaxy of Terror, where you had to make the film look like millions of bucks, where you didn't have that. I think he learned a thing or two from John Carpenter, because he worked behind the scenes, like the some of the effects stuff on the Steve from New York. And he said one of the inspirations was uh, John Carpenter. Like how I was able to utilize a low budget like Aliens. That was the... Aliens. Yep. Can you imagine John Carper doing Aliens? That'd be interesting. But uh, Halloween. Like he did Halloween on such a low budget. And I know uh, James Cameron was impressed with that. Let's see. Okay, look that up. Here we get into the, the love scene. Another great piece of score by Brad Fidel. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Pretty much. This is around, yeah, Piranha 2, he had a fever dream in Rome, he developed the concept. Filming took place mostly at night on location in Los Angeles. 78.3 million dollars are made on a 6.4 million dollar budget Let's see the cast Michael Bean just want to look him up he did from 84 to 86 he did aliens like he didn't do anything else, not even I'm gonna say like did he even even do like TV work? Let's see. Okay, so this film is a good movie, it's a success. The best he could get was a TV movie called Delhi Intentions in nineteen eighty five. Like, that's the best he could get. That's just crazy to me. And then Aliens. And then, okay, Rampage with William Friedkin. The Seventh Sign, which I always forget he's in that. Something called In a Shallow Grave. Or Romantic Drama. The Abyss, Navy Seals, Time Bomb, Terminator 2, T2. Tombstone. That's why he was in Jade. 
another William Freeton film, The Rock in 96, American Dragons 98, Susan's Plan, Cherry Falls, The Art of War with Wesley Snipes in 2000, he was a villain in Plot Stoppers, Grindhouse in 2007, so... And then doing stuff like the Scorpion Team 4. Ah, uh, this is the score I was thinking of. When I mentioned the score for the, the, the chase, this is the score I'm talking about. I love this score. So, not the previous one, this one. I got the wrong car chase. <laughs> I mean, pretty well filmed for uh, low budget and nice wide shots to show the audience what's going on. I'm trying to see, like, for Linda Hamilton, after this, she was in Black Moon Rising in 86 with Tom Lee Jones. Teen Kong Lives, Mr. Destiny, that's with uh, James Belushi. I forgot she was in that film. Yeah, she played James Belushi's wife. That's right. And then, a T for Jen, she was in Teen Kong Lives. Ooh, Roadkill. Silent Fall, which is a meh, sound kind of a thriller with good cast, Richard Dreyfus, Linda Hamilton, Don Lifgow, Dante's Peace, Shadow Conspiracy, let's see, past 10 years she hasn't done a lot, Bermuda Tentacles, 2014, what the fuck is that movie? Jamie Kennedy, Linda Hamilton, Sci-Fi Channel, Bermuda Triangles. Fucking Bermuda Triangle. Look at this. <laughs> it's all like deeped out. That's why I tell this thing. Deeped out to my face. Deep the fuck out. God damn it. It's bullshit to the bit. Fucking hell. God damn. On your feet, soldier. On your feet. Yeah, she doesn't say that yet. <clears throat> but then you got the warrior hurt, and then you have the waitress having to step up and showcase the beginning of what will lead to her being the mother of the leader of the resistance showing that she can do it i do like this makeup with stan winston did on arnold with half the face like i think <clears throat> that makeup looks fairly good yeah blow the shit out of it And then that's the last you see of Arnold in the movie. Which that's another thing they would not do nowadays. It's Arnold. You can't have him. I mean, think about the last. 28. Well, 10 or so minutes of the movie. No more Arnold. Which makes sense, you know, story-wise. You know, he's... But... It was he's the star. And that's kind of what happened. He became the star. So it's like. That was a detriment. Honestly for the Terminator franchise. It really was. People are like oh that's. It's true. 
because being the star of the film means yeah I show my face and I'd be there by the end um, if my face maybe half of it or a portion of it and on top of that I don't want to be the bad guy if I die, be the good guy and die, fine, you know, self-sacrifice. But the bad guy, no. And my neighbor's rooster felt the same way. <laughs> yeah, I can't help it, Mr. Rooster. But that's what happens. <clears throat> but of course, it's not over yet. I know it's not over yet, Mr. Rooster. I didn't say it was fucking over yet. I think everyone has seen the Terminator. They know it's not over yet. So shut up. It's funny. People could edit this where this is the end of the film. <laughs> they, they both hug. Which I think maybe that was what James Tan was trying to do. Like they hug, then in the middle of the fire wreckage, and then freeze frame credits. <clears throat> I guess in a, like someone could do that as an edit for the ending of the film, but then here we go. Yeah, my neighbor's rooster doesn't like that. Sorry, okay, it won't be edited. Shit. Now we get a bit of a... This stop motion would be the best way to describe it. I do like the design. I think the, the design of the T-800, the way it looks is fairly cool. It's a very cool nightmarish design. You know, the way it moves, again, it's for low budget. The wide shots with the stop motion. Again, for its time... I, I can enjoy it. It's charming. No, it's not photorealistic. But I still like it. I, but I'm a, I'm a fan of that type of animation. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I, I did harsh on some other low-budget films. Well, why are you harsh on that? They have low budget. Because I see films like this and others that have a low budget, but with ambition and with talent, you see what they're able to accomplish. No, not all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed, but pretty fucking close. This is where she goes, On your feet, soldier! On your feet! Which I don't think, in retrospect, you didn't need to kill off Kyle Reese. You didn't really need to do that. But, it could have been he's passed out dead. Or you think he's dead, and then she, you know, does this. You know, he saved her, now she's going to save him. And then defeat it. No, he got the Terminator to this point. She's going to finish the job. <laughs> I guess if I would have directed the film, I would have made it where Kyle Reese lived. Be like, hey, you know what? You're doing a good job. Just let him live. Well, that's what fuck up the timeline. Well, you say, well, we can't, you know... We can't really tell much about the father or... Or maybe you do have to tell him eventually because that way he's sure to send him. So you survive, you live. I don't know.
it is a really cool design. I think that was Stan Winston's work as well. Another guy may rest in peace, Stan Winston. Uh, again, a very talented effects man. Worked on Aliens. Worked on this film, Leviathan. Worked on just a variety of movies. Jurassic Park, Predator, and... Uh, Sally's no longer with us. Sorry, I'm not saying anything. I'm just <laughs> getting to the movie again. He's a bit bloodied up. I mean, when you get fucking smacked in the face with metal, your face will get bloodied up a little bit. So, would you say he died from injury of the explosion or from being smacked from the the robot, the cyborg, I should say? Does the explosion ricochet and hit her leg? Does he have to find a reason for her not to just run but to, to crawl? There you go, there's the reveal of the wound. There you go. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's like, okay, you know what, I'm not going, especially when he casts Michael Bean, you know, I killed you off in the previous movie, man. I'm not going to kill you off in this movie. That movie there. And then someone else did it for him <laughs> in Alien 3. Which fuck the alien three? Yeah, I don't know if it's like from the wounds sustained from being smacked from the cyborg or if it's from the explosion. It's like, well, Sarah, I got you halfway there. <laughs> Literally, you got to finish up the rest. But he also, you give a moment for her to, to prove that she is strong enough to go into the future for what's going to happen next. Although that must suck. Yeah, I have the info, and a few years ago, it'll be a nuclear war. So yeah, that's, that's fun times. That's a lot of fun times. I mean, I don't know how the nuclear war happens. So I don't know where specifically I'm supposed to be, but... I'm guessing into these mountains. <laughs> Make the guess. I guess Kyle Reese told her more about it, like the year, because in this film he never mentions the year. But in the sequel, like she knows the year. Yeah, I don't think he mentions the the year where it happens. Was it 1997 or so? <laughs> I'm sure like people doing this film probably back to the day they thought, okay, we're doing this sci-fi B-movie, whatever, and then you see where it becomes. But, and it's always crazy. Like, you look at... Like, Arnold became a big star, but you look at the others, like... Linda Hamilton, Michael Bean. This is probably a part of them that I want to say jealousy, but it's like, well, oh, fuck, you know, you look at what James Cameron got to, you look at where Arnold got to, why not me? You know, why not me? I mean, Linda Hamilton, Michael Bean worked, but it's like, man, we're the, the two, kind of the two leads of the film, and, you know, you just say their career did not go as far as well, uh, Arnold and James Cameron's career. But Sally just all these 
great you know horror films like Tessie Chainsaw Massacre. That's just their all, all time classic, but you know, what happened to those actors? They didn't maybe they got jobs but nothing you know as tremendously high profile. Like Jamie Lee Curtis couldn't do it until she did a film like Trading Places or something like that, then she was able to get a bit more She should be lucky she was able to not go to jail. <laughs> you have to think there'd be some info about, you know, her being in that police station. Maybe not, I don't know. Obviously, it's been some time as her belly is showing a little bit. Is that the same dog? That looks like the same dog we saw earlier at the hotel. Or the multi- that uh, Was there a dog that Michael Bean was kind of trying to pet at the motel? It looks like the same dog. Maybe I'm fooling myself. I don't know who this actor is, but he does a good job in his bit role. This is a storm coming. <laughs> Man, those old school tape recorders. A few years later, it'd be those tape recorders you just have in your hand. Nowadays, it'd be a cell phone. That's another thing, like, if you had a cell phone, you would record the whole Terminator stuff and people would believe you. That or they think is a fucking YouTube video and if you notice background noise is because construction there's construction around going on but yeah this is a classic it's a started James Cameron's career which led to this film one of my personal favorites Arnold would go on to do Commando in 85 uh, Predator and the Running Man in 87 Red Heat and what, 88? Total Recall in 1990. Then Terminator 2 in 1991. <laughs> underlay, underlay. Fucking kid. Ah, there's the picture. Comes. Well, not full circle, but. It's like, oh, okay, that's where that picture came from. There's a storm coming. I know. And we know too. Just there's some really shitty movies coming up. Called Genesis and Dark Fate. Rise of the Machines. I mean it's better than those two. But still. Kind of crappy. I think great score though. Love the score to this. I mean, this is my favorite version of the theme, or that Harlan Ellison theme. That's in there because he made a bitch fit, which Harlan Ellison seemed like he did that a lot, where he did something. They go, Harlan Ellison's like, well, this is based on a story I might have done on Twilight Zone or Star Trek or I'll live whatever the fuck it was. And yeah, it probably didn't have shit to do with that. But he's like, I'm going to make a bit stink. You know, give me... Duh, duh, duh. It's like, fine, whatever. Just shut him the fuck up. Here's your fucking credit that you didn't deserve. You didn't do shit. Fucking Harlan Ellison. I'm sorry. I mean, he just... Anytime I hear it, see his name, he's just like bitching about something. At least back to the day. This is my take on it. Focus Polar. I know this sounds weird. Anytime I look at credits, I'm like, I wonder what happened to this person. Like, video playback operator, Roger Schreitzer. What did he do? 
You know, first aid, Pattison Newberry. What did he do? They work on other films. They just did a regular job. You know, what happened to the two grips, Bruce Bile and Elliot N Nakbar? Apparently, the roosters asked in the same damn question. You know, like who happened to like what happened to uh, the special effects team? Fantasy two. So I'm just enjoying listening to the music. I did Terminator 2 is a good movie. Should have stopped after that. <laughs> but I do think this is the, in my opinion, it's the best one. Favorite one, however you want to word it. And there's Stan Winston, may rest in peace. Second unit. Set to unit director effects. Like Julia Gomberg, costumer. What happened to her? Oh, there you go. Ar Arnold Michael Bean. That's kind of a weird way to do the credits because station attendant Tony Morales Morell seemed like he got top credit too. <laughs> or cleaning man, Norma Friedman. Truck driver, Chino Fats Williams. Chino? Chino Fats Williams. There you go. What happened to Chino Fats Williams? That's the question of the day. If you got to, uh, if you got to the end of this commentary, write in the comment section. Uh, <laughs> Chino Fats for the win. That made people be like, what the fuck is this guy writing about? Someone clicked on the video. They read the comments. Chino, what the fuck is Chino Fats? If you listen to the whole calendar, you know who Chino Fats is. He was the truck driver. Chino Fats. Music. You can't do that. Pictures of you by 16 millimeter. What happened to that band? 16 millimeter. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 but great movie. Thanks once again for the paid requests. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.